After the second game, one of my teammates woke up to me and said, you know, this is your last year in NBA, right? You criticize China, you criticize Nike, you're not going to play basketball every game. Have fun, smile, I hope you win a championship, but this is it for you. Just last summer, I am doing a basketball camp in New York. So after the, we had an amazing basketball camp with the kids. Um, after the basketball camp, all the kids just lined up for me and they were just getting pictures and taking, uh, you know, getting autographs one by one. So I remember, so I took a picture with this kid and his parents called me out in front of everybody. The media was there, my friends, um, some of my, you know, other, you know, athlete friends were there and little kids were there. He said, how can you call yourself a human rights activist? Mm -hmm when your Muslim brothers and sisters are getting tortured and raped every day in concentration camp in China. And I'm still smiling for the camera. <laughs> so I took a picture with this kid, I turned around, I was like, I promise I'm gonna get back to you. So that day, I canceled everything. I went back to my hotel, I started to study about what's going on over there in China. And the more I studied, the more I realized, wow, this is just crazy and no one have a courage to talk about this issue. Mm. You see Uyghurs, and the more you study, you see like Tibetans, Hong Kongers, Taiwanese people, Mongolians, Falun Gongs, they are all under heavy persecution by Chinese government. Mm. So I was like, well, I gotta talk about it. But on internet, you can find all kinds of news, you don't know which one mm. to trust or not. It could be a fake news, it could be real news. Mm. So I called my manager, I was like, I need you to find me a concentration camp survivor. Obviously, he was very shocked. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, well, just find me one. So he did find me one. It was a lady. So we sit down, had a conversation. I had an amazing one-hour conversation with her. You know, um, I wanted to just learn the story from, you know, for, firsthand. So she was telling me about all the torture methods, all the gang raping, all the you know, forced sterilization, abortion, and organ harvesting, and surveillance cameras. And I was like, the more she talked, the more I was like, shame with myself. I was like, I cannot believe that God gave me this huge platform, and I only focused on one dictatorship. So I was like, from now on, I'm going to talk about every dictatorship. That moment. So I end of our conversation, I asked her, I was like, how can I help? She said, I don't need your help, I'm good. I was like, so why did we have this one hour conversation for no reason? Like, why did you even come here? She said, I live in America. I live a good life here. I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. I can eat whatever I want. But help those people, help those two, three million Uyghurs are in concentration camp in China because they are getting tortured and raped every day. So at that moment, I'm like, I don't care what kind of contract or endorsement deal or anything you can offer me. I'm just gonna go out there and just expose the whole system. Mm. That's how, how it all started. And uh, we know that the NBA mm -hmm. has, the Chinese market is bigger than Huge. the American market. Exactly. So this didn't go down well. So like I said again, I wanted to do it, I wanted to do it in a very unique way. Mm -hmm. So later on, if someone comes and says, why are you doing this? I'm like, this is human rights. So you don't, you're telling me that you don't care about human rights, mm -hmm. you know? So. I wanted to do, do it in a very unique way because I remember when I was a kid, whenever I watched an NBA game, the first thing I was watching was the shoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone loves shoes. What color they are, what brand it is, if they're comfortable. The next day I was telling my dad, please buy those shoes for me, yeah. you know? So I had this idea. I was like, let's reach out to these artists around the world, which they have been oppressed by their governments because they are the one that knows the story more than anyone. Mm -hmm. And um, and we were like, let's t tell them to put all the struggles, all this, you know, emotion, all the stories on the shoes, and we're gonna go out there and play basketball. And these shoes are non-slave labor. I mean, many of the shoes out there in the world right now, unfortunately, they have uh, sweatshops and slave labor. Anyway, so we created the shoes. Uh, our for my first topic was Tibet, free Tibet. You know, it's not a political, it's literally a human rights issue. So I put the shoes on, free Tibet shoes, I went out there and played basketball. It was right, I, my, my, our first game, I was playing for the Celtics, our first game against New York Knicks, mm -hmm. it was the opening night for the, the New York, and it was just the whole world was watching that game. Mm -hmm. The biggest rivalry. 
So I put the shoes on, I'm warming up, and a minute before the game, two gentlemen from the NBA came to me and said, take your shoes on. I was like, excuse me? They're like, well, you know, your shoes has been getting so much attention internationally, you got to take them off. So at that moment, I was, I was just getting ready for my citizenship test mm-hmm. in America. So I, was, I closed my eyes. I'm like, okay, we have 27 amendments in America. My first amendment, freedom of speech. I told them, no. Even if I get fined, I'm not taking them off. They said, we're not talking about fine. We're talking about getting banned, which there is no rule against it. So that half, I played zero minutes. Mm-hmm. Zero. I went back to my locker room. I had thousands of notifications in my phone. I clicked on the one that my manager sent me. He said, every Celtics game is banned in China. It took them 24 minutes, first, first quarter to the 12 minutes, second quarter, 20, uh, 12 minutes, 24 minutes to ban every Celtics game in television. So I was like, well, that clearly shows the censorship and the dictatorship over there. Anyway, so I, after that game, I played zero minutes. We lost the game. And... Uh, after the game, there was just a huge media storm. Literally, every media in the world, from very random countries, which I'd never even heard of, wanted to have an interview. I told my manager to decline them all. I don't want to have no interview with anyone. I didn't want my teammates to think I'm doing this for attention. Mm. I was like, decline everything. And he was like, are you sure? I was like, decline everything. So after the game, NBA called me. They're like, well, you know what you did. MBPA called me, the Player Association, which I give thousands of dollars every year to protect my rights against the NBA. Mm. They say, you cannot wear the shoes every game. NBA has been pressuring us. I was like, am I breaking any rules? They said, no. They said, well, you can never remember again. I was like, if, you're, if I'm breaking any rules, tell me. I won't wear them. They pressured me so much. I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm not going to wear free to bet shoes every game. Mm. They said, promise? I said, promise. So we hang up the phone. So the next game... I wore free Uyghur shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that's what you call doubling down. Yeah. So they called me after the game, the <laughs> second game. They're like, you're a liar. You lied to us. We can never trust you again. I was like, first of all, relax. Second, I never lied to you. I never said I'm not going to wear free Uyghur shoes. I just said I'm just not going to wear free Tibet shoes. At that moment, they got it. They were not going to be able to make me apologize, took my tweet down and say, I was not educated enough, sorry, whatever. So when, uh, after the second game, one of my teammates woke up to me and said, you know, this is your last year in the NBA, right? You criticized China, you criticized Nike, you're not going to play basketball every game. Have fun, smile, I hope you win a championship, but this is it for you. Wow. And that was it. And, that, and it was as simple as that? Simple as that. 